What up my freaks, Ruinous Insight here with part 8 of my Total War Warhammer 3 modded Blood Dragons Immortal Empires campaign. So as we saw last time, Edmund von Sinclair had himself an absolutely glorious battle as his graveguard held up three stacks and belonging to Heinrich Kemmler, all while in raiding stance and with hurt vigor. At that, we just barely managed to pull it up, but have had the most difficult battle in this campaign so far. And you know what? I happen to be glad that it was Edmund von Sinclair that got it. Uh, out of all the uh, lords so so far, or at the very least, the uh, random generated lords. He's, I think, the forefront for me in terms of candidates for the uh, uh, for the status of a legendary lord to be permanently added to our uh, canon roster here. And especially because he shares the von Sinclair name with Bethilda, who was our uh, uh, who was our legendary Lamian from the Vampire Counts campaign with Vlad and Isabella. But anyway, I'm already going on a tangent as I do in terms of what we got to do this time around. Balthazar Geld still needs bringing down and Abarash continues heading southward. We also got to get one of these uh, uh, one of these worthy foe battles going and ooh, that reminds me I do believe we switched out yes, we got a new a leg item here which is and blood scaled chasses reforged and gives us the wayfarer ability strider is probably not super relevant to Abarash but uh, the acceleration and deceleration is certainly helpful. 15 more armor, 10% more HP, and 10% more ward save. Fairly considerable buff to his tankiness. Hmm. He's getting so tanky from various items that it probably means we'd be able to switch out his shield and sword for a two-handed weapon, but I'll think about it. I do like the way the shield and sword uh, look, though I take it that this wouldn't actually change with the way the model looks, it's just items, so probably wouldn't matter? We'll see. Anyway, uh, it, it's been such a long time since I've used Daniel and such that I don't actually uh, remember what that looks like, although he did change weapons, now that I recall. Actually, he should. Hmm. Anyway, uh, we'll uh, we'll figure all that out. And in terms of what we gotta do this turn, still I don't believe that there is anything. We need to way to get this guy back some of these grave guard, um, but it's gonna be a while. So uh, let's see. Oh, two more turns until the growth here is up and running, so we can always transfer him some there. Maybe build him some basic zombies in the meantime. Certainly a possibility. End turn. Oh, well, let's proceed, shall we? I really am excited to get those ghostly units up and running as well, or at the very least, try them out. Ambush! Uh, okay, well, the pile of miners and the slayers is probably not worth fighting, so we'll just uh, resolve that. Teensy bit of damage primarily to our bloodkin thralls, but we can... Hmm... This will probably have prevented us from healing, unfortunately. And also wasn't the Slayer King, so he's not going to be back this turn. Yeah, take the money. We're not so damaged that it's going to be a big deal, and we really need a lot of money. Gotta declare war on a few more factions and then promptly peace out with them to uh, take as much cash from them as uh, they're willing to give. Uh, Sword of Cain on Terendal. Uh, the Golden Order has confederated with Sterland. Man. This could be a good thing and could be a bad thing, depending. I mean, it does mean that the Golden Order, or specifically Balthazar Geld, is more likely to appear in various other places, which is potentially a good thing for us. Uh, oh man, Geld is hanging out over on this side, and he's been doing so for quite a while. And since we can't ambush, we can't really do too much with that. I guess what we could do is put Waldemar Rata to sit in Nuln while we send Zacharias out. I think about that this guy would run if we tried to fight him, though. Hmm. Well, we gotta send him to hunt Gelt and Co. Uh, now, we can't move past the Fallen King Mountain here, unfortunately, but what we can do is send Zacharias Ratep, or other temporary lord, and I do mean temporary lord. Ooh, Azag is here. Uh, and I do mean temporary lord because we have no intention of... Uh, Eh, Warrior Bane. Uh, we have no intention of keeping him, because we can just get a new guy at level 18. Can't reach Azag, unfortunately, but that's okay. Alright, go here. Like so. Then we will auto-resolve this. 
a little bit more damage to the Bloodkin Thralls, and hey, we got a Black Parry upped out of it, though. And we will not race it, we will sack it. If this is the last territory belonging to the Slayer King, we certainly want to have him revive and fight him. Frankly... Okay, so Rotap, you, you definitely don't need that. We'll give it to one of our, uh, one of our actual lords. Aberash wouldn't really be an empire builder, and he certainly wouldn't be destroying a bunch of everything. So, uh, yeah, it, the raising and stuff is part of the game mechanics, but there's no way he'd just go around raising everything. As he conferred his ideals of martial valor to his uh, get, as it were. But that was to improve themselves, and it was to never feed upon the weak, because he felt that feeding upon the weak essentially demeans you, so, yeah. There wouldn't be any need to destroy them. Anyway, I would have loved to head out for the Sea Corpse, but I don't think we can do that around the Awakening as yet. We still need to keep it leveling, which we will pay for a little bit right now. Uh, five turns remaining. D-Y to... Oh, I didn't even see that one. Uh, we're going to have to send Zacharias back there, aren't we? As somebody pointed out in the comments, we could just send anybody to do that, so we will send Zacharias. Hopefully, Azag will fall for Aberash's ambush. Not that we necessarily need the ambush, but uh, I doubt that he'd be willing to fight him just straight up. Anyway, let's move everybody else, and then let's get back into the action. We have the Witch Hunter threat coming in probably one turn, which does mean Zacharias, this is Zacharias, should probably hang around here for now. Hmm... We could try to cross instead. Well, you know what? Let's see if this guy's willing to give us a fight. Let's level up and let's uh, try the Strength of Steel for you, sir. And then, I guess, on to Soul Stealer so that you can heal yourself. Though I'm sure you'd be fine without it. Level 20 is when we get your Blood Dragon Zombie Dragon. Blood Dragon Zombie Dragon. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, that'll take a little bit. And go. Boris Talson. He's the tallest son. Nah, he's gonna run. Okay. Well, we expected that. Expected that. Can you raid from here? And no, you cannot. You can channel, you can march stance. Eh, just go into raiding stance, or channeling stance, rather. Uh, maybe guilt will... Nah, he can't reach us either. Oh, well, maybe. There's another army here, so maybe these two will try to attack at the same time. I doubt that they go for null, but even if they do, there's no chance that they take it either way. Alright, let us keep on going. Edmund. You're going to have to not leave Middenheim for now. Need to rack up 10,000 gold and, well, we're nearly there with the, uh, with the money at least. Though everything around you is now pretty much ruins. We could declare war on the Fecundites, or we could just raid here for a little bit. Let's raid here for a little bit. I'd rather not leave the place. Heinrich Kemmler will return soon, most likely as well. But for now, I'm disinclined to leave any of these new library keeps. As it would be dangerous to do so. We also really need more martial valor. Right now it's going to cost 900 to switch even a single Bloodkin Thrall to become a, a Templar, which is quite expensive. And that's what's gating us from just overrunning the world with obnoxiously powerful units. Uh, so it would cost 400 to upgrade you and then 500 to raise a cap for a single unit. We just can't afford it. Plus I'd like to save a few points for trying out some Cataphracti and some other monstrous units. So yeah, there's the that. Anyway, that sounds like another end turn to me, and then hopefully a battle with Azeg. So let's keep Anarch here, but at the same time, let's actually pop him out of here and then pop him into raiding. I guess anybody that. Okay, a moment. A moment. Would Balthazar Gelt be able to reach Nuln? By the looks of it, no, which means Waldemar, you can go out here. I'm not wrong about this, but if I am, it doesn't matter because I was going to replace you anyway, and all you have is garbage chaff. And we need metal, so all of you raid a few turns like that, and we'll be able to get a massive nest egg of metal. Uh, building upgrade available, we will skip for now, and let's end the turn once more. Alright, while the turn is ending, we have once again reached the engagement threshold, and once again, uh, we will be going for the hour-long episode here. The offer still stands, 400 likes and 50 comments, and the next episode will be an hour long as well. Luther Harkin wants peace now. Uh, I mean, we don't necessarily need to destroy him. We can go after the lizards. Is he willing to pay us anything for this, though? 
He's not willing to pay us anything. That's a little disappointing. You know what? Then we can farm some of his armies and destroy him later. Ah, okay. Well, the ambush did work. I was hoping it wouldn't actually be an ambush battle, uh, but anything to uh, fight Azag. Um, let's see. The rest of his army isn't too crazy. He does have a lot of trolls, but they have poor leadership, and the uh, and disciples of the path should be able to handle them and just fine. Plus, we have a decent amount of anti-large in the form of the depth guard and deck watchers as well. So, plenty of stuff to be uh, to be working with. Anyway, let's get to it. Battle time. Alright, here we go as an ambush battle, so it's certainly going to go quick. Aberash is going to head up into the sky to face off against Azag. And Azag is going to have a pretty bad time of it while the rest of our forces move on in. Now, we've deployed our units of various blood dragons together with bloodkin thralls, wherein the enemy orc boys and biggins are located, and such that they can fight to them one on one, whereas our disciples of the path and our anti large depth guard deck watchers are all deployed in the rear of the column where the enemy trolls are, as they should be able to obliterate those trolls. And no problem, the trolls may be a much bigger but that don't make them stronger and as we see and they're going down all right very nice river trolls uh, well same thing goes for the river trolls as well as the uh, regular trolls the enemy really should be building stone trolls but the ai is generally pretty good at doing so so i do imagine and uh, they will uh, all right more blood dragons or disciples of the path rather facing off against more river trolls azag is still fighting but down to about 30 percent of his hp and ooh, i like with uh, i like the little uh, sort of hole in the battle lines that has opened up for these two to get a nice duel going though part of it is because of that enraged, uh, enraged scream thing that knocks everybody away. Alrighty. Biggins probably don't want to interfere with the contest. Azak backs off a little bit with 30% HP, but he's just backing off. He's not actually running. He will continue to fight, so and good job to him. Steady, mo winded, moving fast, and, and melee unit winning decisively. I'll bet. I'll bet. The rest of Azag's army is certainly in trouble. Just as much as trouble as Azag himself is in, if not more. And the Blood Dragon neophytes together with our units of Thralls are hacking apart the biggins as well as the uh, regular Orc Boys. Looks like a couple more hits will bring Azag down. He has also reached his healing cap and is popping off gazes of Nagash. Ironically, as he has the lore, uh, but ironically because we never use the spell ourselves, uh, despite having access to it. And there he goes. He will drop, but he fought to the last uh, rather than running. Our Knights of the First Keep Phantom are running around in the back lines just obliterating anything they can find but primarily enemy range units while Aberash moves back into the fray to deal with an enemy uh, not lord but orc um, big boss anyway with that with Azag dropping and with the big boss on the way to being gone as well we run down the last of the trolls and the enemy army will shatter beautiful all right, look at all those troll corpses, but uh, that was never going to be a particularly uh, uh, difficult time, especially considering we managed to pull off the ambush. All right, very, very nice. Uh, I think Aberash would be very impressed with the fact that Azag fought to the last rather than running. Kind of interesting to see that it's such a bestial creature uh, had the courage that so many uh, uh, that so many men did not. Very nice, very nice, Azag.
Props to you, my friend. Anyway, uh, we did well, a little bit of damage, three units lost, should have been zero, of course, but I guess I couldn't spot which uh, units actually lost well. And uh, the units might have been one of the blood dragons that I uh, should have invocationed at the very least, the neophytes. Speaking of the blood dragons and the disciples of the path, they did a great job absolutely slaughtering uh, those various troll units, though sadly we were unable to catch them, that's also hardly surprising. Uh, we're going to... I guess take the money, we're still a little bit hurt, but, uh, well, it is a decent amount of healing, just judging by how much it'll move the bars, but we need money. We need money to build those special keeps, so, arise. Because those special keeps will unlock more quests. Now, every time we use those uh, uh, those phantom unit summons, it really gets me thinking uh, about the ooh. These guys have spawned very nice. Uh, it gets me thinking about lore specifically. Ah, spell resistance, nice. Uh, specifically, Bard of Nightmare for Zacharias Orata. Nice spell swords for the uh, thralls as well. Getting some nice stuff. Uh, plus, gonna have to fight and these guys again. Huh. They didn't spawn outside of Middenheim at all. Well, that's interesting. Anyway, as I was saying, the ghostly units, like the Knights of the First Keeps, like the uh, uh, like the ghosties that we uh, like Mikhail Harkin and stuff like that. And what gets me thinking is. I'm not 100% sure that vampires oh, can actually sense. become ghosts. Like, I'm not 100% sure whether it's possible in the lore, like it's physically possible. Or at the very least, even if it is physically possible, it would be just incredibly difficult. Now, my reasoning for thinking this is a that I don't remember any vampire becoming a ghost ever and B, the process that creates a vampire uh, essentially severs their soul from the realm of souls, or at the very least, a piece of it, the realm of souls being the fantasy equivalent of the 40k warp. And uh, actually the old lore is fairly, fairly vague on what exactly happens with a vampire's soul, and several of the older source books actually kind of contradict each other on what exactly happens, whether the soul is actually bound directly to their body, or whether it's sort of trapped in limbo outside of Moore's Gates or whatnot. Uh, I believe there was a thing, one of the older lore books that sort of separated the soul into parts, and the vampires had all six, or right, six out of seven, I think, parts of their soul and lacked what is called a shadow part of their soul. And the reason I remember that is because wraiths are almost all shadow if you divide the soul into parts. Which was kind of interesting. So if we compare wraiths, which are all shadow, and the vampire, or nearly all shadow, and the vampires, which lack the shadow portion of the soul completely, and does that mean that they can't actually become ghosts at all? And once again, I don't remember any vampires becoming ghosts in the lore. There is something somewhat similar in the end times with Sauron, the Necrarch lore, or the, the uh, first Necrarch. A.K.A. Melchior, A.K.A. Zacharias, the ever-living. Uh, spoilers. <laughs> anyway, was Sauron was able to possess other vampires, but I'm not sure that what he did was actually in a kind of ghostly form, or rather than a unique ability uh, that was to himself. Plus, being the first Necrarch, he's pretty sorcerously up there, and may have unique knowledge due to... Uh, and due to the Necrarchs generally being loyal to Nagash and having more necromantic loyal, um, necromantic loyal, and more necromantic knowledge in general. But yeah, he was a little bit like Lucius in that he was able to, Lucius from 40k, uh, in that he was able to sort of possess the body of his killer and then sort of become them, and did it with other vampires. But I'm not sure that is a, quite a point for him, for a ghostly form so much. Hmm. Anyway, uh, this went off on a tangent. <laughs> <laughs> uh, where were we here? Middenheim, we need to build a, your library of the White Wolf so that your settlement can defend itself. Still surprised that there were no uh, spawns here. We need to figure out where they were. Now, two are outside of Aberash, and ooh, we got two near full stacks. That's actually worth fighting by the looks of it. Aberash, I bet you're happy about this. Uh, I hope that they both count when we kill them in the sense that 
Oh, you're gonna need to besiege this, aren't you? Damn it, where is the Slayer King? Uh, go here. Oh. They've got some nice stuff now. Look at this. Battle Pilgrims, uh, Halberdiers, Inquisition Kill Squads, Questing Ice. That's just one of the armies. Of Looks course. like finally the Witch Hunters have become a real threat. Oh, I am happy. And Eberush's army is hurt. Ah, uh, he could chase down this army and the remnants of Azags, but you know what? He wouldn't bother feeding on the weak, so that's fine. We can let them go. Uh, I'm excited to fight these guys now. And let's see what we're looking at here. Now, they do have massive piles of units, so I'm kind of inclined to get a few points into some of our casting capabilities. And just to be able to clear the chaff so that Aberash can do stuff. On the other hand, we need to get to the exotic dead so we can get the additional ward save on the uh, uh, on the Disciples of the Path. Unfortunately, out of the stuff here, we have direct buffs for all the different Ordos, and that's pretty much it. And we're probably not going to be able to buff all the Ordos in terms of the uh, points that we have remaining. And I doubt if we mostly make this army made up of various Disciples of the Path that will have room for tons and Ordos. But if we do, it'll probably have to be Ordo Draconis. As uh, well, and that would be appropriate. So I guess we could start moving through this. Even though I am once again tempted to uh, get Wall of, uh, of Fire and Rain and Blood. But you know what, for now. Contemptuous Skill, Ordo Draconis, and Disciplined Core. Ordo Draconis will be the things that we go for. And you, sir. Oh, level 30. Very nice. Let's get you Mentor as a, a priority, because we will want you upgraded. And I feel like I'm going to keep you just because you have Disciplined, even though there may be good reason to upgrade you to various stuff. Lose a battle and survive. Those are really hard. <laughs> because you have to lose a battle on purpose. I know you can just move in and withdraw from a battle, but uh, and generally speaking, I'm too lazy to do it. Anyway, uh, Pyrrhic victory, high casualties. Look at all those halberds. Oh, we've got Pegasus Knights, four of them. Oh, this is nice. Oh, yes. Oh, I am happy. These guys are getting good. Oh, let's get to it. Alrighty, the path beckons and here we go, we walk the path as we finally got a couple of armies oh, that should challenge ours. I am very excited about that. Abrush is going to move in first and he will be targeted by the enemy Inquisition kill squads as well as the enemy lord, but he's the only one on the battlefield, literally the only one on the battlefield who isn't threatened uh, by those kill squads, and I'm sure they will target somebody else as soon as they can. Anyway. It looks like uh, the enemy lord has surrounded himself with a little coterie of troops, battle pilgrims and the like, so we're just going to pop off a couple spells to clear the way so that Aberash can go after the enemy lord. And that was a pretty bloody landing, but it is only halberdiers and battle pilgrims that it hurts, so they are just chaff as far as we're concerned. I'm going to summon those phantoms of the first keep on the field as well, and they will be going for one of the Inquisition kill squads. We cannot have these guys fire on us as we move uh, towards the enemy army. And speaking of moving towards the enemy army, we have our Disciples of the Path as well as our Blood Dragon Neophytes in the lead here, whereas all of our units of Bloodkin are... Ooh, somebody just took a ton of damage there. Ouch. Bloodkin Thralls are down to 11 units, lost all of their HP, and have begun to crumble away. Well, that was pretty painful for them. We're going to have to heal them up. So an Invocated Oath and a regular Invocation of Nehek will hit them. And I specifically tried to move the... Uh, uh, I keep wanting to say Depth Guard. Well, I guess there are some Depth Guard here. Uh, the uh, Depth Guard and uh, the Thralls around on the flank, specifically to try to avoid them getting targeted like that. But targeted, they still got. On the bright side, uh, they are not being targeted by the uh, heavier melee units as some questing knights with their armor-piercing greatswords move in, only to be met uh, by the glaives of the Disciples of the Path who bring them down uh, very, very quickly, which is impressive. As Questing Knights are a hardy unit and a very, very good unit. Arguably the best unit on the Bretonian roster in terms of pure cost for effectiveness. At the very least, more effective in terms of cost than... Uh, 
and then things like Grail Knights are due to their uh, relative expense and high tier. And so most Bretonian armies should be made up of questing knights as you need that armor piercing more than you would get from the knights of the realm. I suppose in terms of cost effectiveness, the argument can also be made for peasant archers, but, uh, well, we're talking knights. Who, who would ever consider peasants is what I'm getting at. Anyway, the second army has arrived and it's a big old second stack. Those Pegasus knights moving into the fray as well and Abarash has had to peel away from his duel to deal with at least a few of those elites and also to keep on casting his healing. Our units of the Phantoms of the First Keep are holding back a pretty big old pile of units, though their goal here is to attack the Inquisition kill squads, and uh, they're just getting bogged down while running at them. Speaking of running at them, we summon a unit of zombies near the enemy back lines, and they're just going to run straight at the handgunners to prevent them from firing and knocking our vampires down with focus fire. A very bloody melee right in the center here as great swords, halberdiers, and pegasus it's tons of units with armor-piercing damage face off against the Disciples of the Path and the Blood Dragon Neophytes, and this is something Aberash himself would approve of. Just the sheer numbers of enemies and the fact that they are both elite and actually a threat to our units due to their armor-piercing is very appropriate. Though it's still so weird to see the Battle Pilgrims not be unbreakable, like they are in SFO. I'm still constantly getting confused about uh, what's from SFO and what's uh, from uh, vanilla in terms of uh, various uh, basic, uh, base unit, non-modded unit. That. Anyway, looks like Aberash is hunting down those Pegasus Knights now. If they want to call themselves a knight, uh, they should be throwing themselves into duels with him, but most of them appear to be running. Our zombies are doing work in the background. Gotta love this spell as control, as it essentially prevented all three of the units of handgunners from firing at us from the back lines, and has essentially forced them to enter the melee. The AI has this behavior now. It didn't have it in the second game, but it has it now, whereas the uh, range unit units if they get uh, mobbed in melee by melee infantry have a tendency to join their own melee infantry in melee where the, the word melee has lost all meaning where they can uh, uh, find some protection from said melee units and thus uh, those zombies essentially took three handgunners off of the field which for the six or whatever mana it cost to summon them was just so very worth it. Anyway, the Disciples of the Path continue to hold the center align, whether it be against the Pegasus Knights or the Great Swords or Halberdiers or everything and anything and everything. Although sadly, the Phantoms of the First Key Power summon is nearly done. Granted, we don't care because they're merely a summon, but nonetheless. They were overwhelmed in unlife, and they will be overwhelmed in... I don't even know what to call this. <laughs> it's not undeath. <laughs> Oh, but anyway, anyway, and we continue to hold, and there is a big old blob of units, and while I did forego dropping spells through most of the battle, at least damaging spells from Aberash, we're gonna drop at least one rain of fire and blood upon them, just because it's such a cool looking spell. I love the combination of that Chaos Dwarf lore with the piercing bolts of burning. Seems appropriate. Anyway, with that, that looks like that deals the decisive blow to the blob of enemies, and we were able to hold the center and finally drive them off and back to our victory now one minor problem is that the enemy is relatively close to the edge here which means they are going to escape escape with a fairly decent number of units. We're gonna do our best to run them down, uh, but no guarantee that we will. We also took a lot of damage on a bunch of units, namely the Thralls, as we were healing our Disciples reasonably well. This is a dra Blood Dragon Neophyte unit. Uh, but uh, while we chase, we can heal up some of the units, so hopefully they'll be able to auto-resolve the next battle.
All right, very nice. I was I was very very happy and with that battle. Well done to the uh, to the new and improved witch hunter armies. I have to say, uh, we got ourselves a decent bit of damage. Twenty six units lost. It was actually a lot more. If we take a look at one of the enemy Inquisition kill squads here, this one got twenty eight kills, and I'm pretty sure every single one of those was vampire kills. One of our units of blood can drop to like five units before we were able to heal it back up to uh, 16 or whichever unit it was so these guys are extremely dangerous if you don't uh lock them down pretty much immediately. Uh, the Pegasus Knights were also fun to deal with as Aberash got to duel plenty of them and got himself 66k damage and 512 kills. Obviously our Disciples of the Path cleaned house 15, 17 and okay 8 uh, damage cake damage on you 2, 13 and 10 on you 2 and 8 and 10 on the Depth Guard as well. Obviously the Bloodkin were relegated to second line but that is as it should be here. Uh, I think for this we're going to take the heal because I'd like to auto-resolve the remnants of these armies, but I don't know whether we'll actually be able to, so I guess we're about to find out. And, oh, they're going to run fairly far. Profession. Okay, one of them is going to run fairly far. This should have also given us back one of the Disciples of the Path Warriors, but alas, we can't use it until we... Uh, uh, I guess until we occupy Mount Gunbad, so it'll be a little bit of time. All right, head to Marius uh, Putkammer here. Test their skill. And a str- oh. Okay, fine. Manually fight this super quick. Why not? I mean, I guess it'll preserve units this way anyway. Hmm. Also, while we're here, continue thinking about whether a vampire can become a ghost or not. These are the questions. These are the uh, interesting lore discussions for me. Anyway. Hmm. If something ever prompts me to actually finally create that uh, in Discord for this channel, it'll probably be random lore discussions uh, like this. Uh, another thing about vampire... the possibility of a vampire ghost and whether it's physically possible or not. So vampires have to maintain their soul essentially the reason they drink blood is it has nothing to do with blood at all or at the very least it's not the blood itself they're not digesting blood it's not nutrients that they need they can't digest things uh it's what the blood really represents or uh, at the very least the magic slash soul stuff uh, that is within the blood and the reason why that's important is because since vampires need to maintain their soul in this manner Manner, being cut off from the realm of souls as they are would a ghost be able to do the same now as I recall wraiths I think do maintain themselves I think it's wraiths they maintain themselves essentially the same way because they have to steal the soul stuff the soul fire that's the word uh, it's another part of the soul the Nehekaran lich priests is sort of uh, separated the soul into various parts and yeah the, that's the whole shadow thing and stuff that I was talking about it's from one of the uh, from one of the books uh, anyway hmm so the question is would they be able to maintain their soul in a ghostly form even if it was possible and they'd have to constantly do something similar to feeding most likely um, but they wouldn't be able to feed directly probably just kill things like wraiths do hmm all right this is, this is all that's distracting me from uh, from doing stuff <laughs> all right let's uh, let's kill things before I get too distracted uh, actually pretty much nearly everything is dead the switch hunter general is dead disciples of the path are reckon infantry face should probably stop these uh, uh, handgunners from firing but they're not inquisition kill squad so they're not gonna be nearly as threatening abrash you can heal your a little minion lord here you can go after the enemy and I believe we're good here all right, did anybody actually take damage through that, or were we just fine while I was musing on the nature of the vampires? So, eh, heal up this blood dragon just in case. I can't tell if it got hurt or not, but why not? Let's heal it to full and find out. A unit has been wiped out. Those probably the zombies that we use to defend our bloodkin aspirant, and I think everything else is more or less fine. Or at least I would imagine so. 
Yeah, they did lose one unit. Ah, and now it's back up and running. Perfect. All right, decisive victory and losses zero. It would have been one and it would have been a blood dragon lost, which would have been unfortunate. All righty. I'd really like to get two more Disciples of the Path as soon as possible. Ooh, we can actually turn one of these guys into knights right now if we wanted to. Ah, well, whether we have the valor remains to be seen, though we will get a decent amount of bonus valor after defeating this pile of, uh, uh, this pile of witch hunters. We just need to figure out where the others are. Ooh. Man, all right, fine, heal to full. Well, not to full, but to heal, just just heal generally. And another student, more disciples of Aberash yeah, available, but we still can't recruit them outside of our own territory. Uh, I guess. Okay, wait. How the heck do we do this? First of the blood dragons. Minor problem. Zacharias is kind of stuck here. Huh. This guy, Aberash, you can't reach him in March stance, can you? Sort of, maybe? I can't quite tell. Try. It means you won't be able to heal, but what we want is... Oh, okay, you can reach him. Good. Ooh, alright. Out of resolve, this is gonna hurt these guys a little bit again. And another Staff of Damnation. Won't say no to that, however. We will sack this, and we'll keep on sacking it until the Slayer King comes back, just for the one-on-one. -on -one. And then we're gonna send you all the way back here. Hopefully you won't get caught by something. Uh, maybe March Sands here just want to send you to the worthy foe encounter so that Aberash doesn't need to uh, divert his forces from this particular location. Alright, and this guy's racking up XP now, which I probably should replace with a more viable lord so that if somebody racks up XP, it's a better lord. Although I'm not happy about these particular virtues that they've got. Hmm. At least soon we'll be able to replace that depth guard that we wanted to. And we do have another space, but uh, we need it for Mount Gunbat as there will be a new army there. And Anarch needs to move away, so a new army needs to defend the Castle Draconov. Actually, speaking of Anarch... Hmm. We have a little army here, but at 18... It's a little much. It's a little much for what we have in terms of the army here. Plus, Anarch is low level and he doesn't have Curse of Undeath. So he can't really keep his forces healed. And what he can do is... Oh. He does have the Hidden Blood Knight outpost. A moment. And these guys, just to double check. Yeah, these guys just still have in camp. Hmm. Is there a way to see where these guys are? Is this the only other one? Wait, 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 wait. Oh! Wallach! You've got uh, you've got several here as well, and hey, if it isn't Hellkeek, we could kill him as well, just for fun if we wanted to. Uh, too bad these guys aren't together, or we'd be able to fight both of them at once. I do have to wonder whether they're worth fighting at this. Uh, obliterate the threat. Yeah, working on it, game, working on it. And oh, Obliterate the Threat quest will be able to probably show us where all the armies are, even if we missed one. Lovely. Alright, go for this. They will indeed fight, but low casualties. Probably not worth fighting a single one, especially as this one's much weaker than the ones that spawn near Aberash. No piles of Pegasus Knights. No Inquisition kill squads. All right, fine. Just how to resolve this. How much damage do we take for that? Some. Not a crazy amount. Ooh, but what we did get is level nines on some of these Blood Dragon neophytes, which we will certainly take. At least those captives for now. And then... Another student. Man, we're getting students all over the place. Uh, then, we, I've been wanting to try these guys out. You are now a... Wait. Oh. No, damn it. It's you guys that are level 9. We need you guys to be level 9. To get to those monsters. How close are you? Oh, you're, you're pretty close anyway. You're pretty close anyway. Now, the question is, will we be able to auto-resolve you? And the answer is, let's find out. Oh, this one does have a couple of Inquisition kill squads, but it's not a full stack. Just wondering whether this one should be fought or not. And we do have the garrison here, which ain't much. But a garrison is a garrison. It's gonna take a while for this place to grow so Wallach can't leave. Unless we get another army here while Wallach leaves. I have to consider that as well. I also forgot that you still have that poor, that one poor little zombie unit. Which will die if we do this. Hmm. I mean, the last battle was pretty fun. I'm kind of inclined to fight this, just just, just because. Uh, just because it's a decent stack now, and we do still have to watch out for those kill squads, the Pegasus Knights, the Questing Knights. It's a better army. Go.
Grand Master of the Ordo Draconis. All right, here we go. Can't uh, can't let Aberash have all the fun. So here comes Walla Karkin to fight one of these better witch hunter stacks as well. And the goal, as always, will be to stop those Inquisition kill squads from sniping any of our lords, heroes, or elites. We're gonna pop the Phantoms of the First Keep and uh, distract the Inquisition kill squads while Wallach goes directly for the enemy witch hunter lord. Wallach also massively buffed up with his various abilities, popping his weapon strength up to 1.5k and his melee attack to 150. Not for too long, however, certainly long enough to heavily damage an enemy lord. Our Bloodkin Aspirin drops down on some handgunners to prevent them from firing, whereas on the flanks we have a little bit of, uh, of cavalry battles going on as Blood Dragon Knights combined with the uh, Thrall Adept Knights are facing off against Pegasus Knights and Outriders. Can't wait for us to have some flying knights of our own via the uh, inner circle stuff. There's still a lot of modded units we have to try out, and we're certainly getting there. Our melee line has uh, engaged the enemy, not just the uh, and not just the blood dragon neophytes, but the thralls as well. And now it's only a matter of time until the enemy gets overrun. Uh, the main threat of these particular armies are the combination of those Inquisition kill squads plus their. Uh, uh, plus their witch hunters just sniping your elites, but we've deprived them of that advantage and now it's a simple matter of running down their infantry. And there we go! Just like that, a very, very quick battle, much quicker than Aberash's, but, well, you know, half as many units and half as much threat as well. We run them down, it's gonna take a little bit, but uh, well done to Wallach. All right, there we go. Very nice and minimal damage. We will heal to full here unless we're attacked, so I think we're free to take the release captives. It's not like this army really needs to do anything else. So, I release those, then oh, the army well, is destroyed. Seasoned campaigner for Wallach as well. And very nice and the sign ability, gleaming pennant. Yeah, sure. And another student, and two other students, I should say. Anyway, return to the Awakened. Raid for more metal. Well, let's raid, let's uh. Alrighty, and we need 10k money, which we do have, and well, actually, well, we need 14k money. We have the Dragon Scales, fortunately, so that's not the big concern, but uh, there is stuff to do. Uh, obliterate the threat, burn off Spriggans. Is this the last army? Indeed it is, but it's going to be difficult to deal with it. Without these guys, we might be able to over the end turn. I have to wonder whether they'll besiege us or whether they'll just sit there and raid. Hmm. Unfortunately, we need more stuff here. Ooh, we can also upgrade your encampment. The ambush would also probably not serve us very well here. And just want to see if we can't get them to attack Castle Drakenhof in a siege. I doubt it. I well, think you could recruit. Uh, okay, that's the Phantoms of the First Keep. Oh, huh, we could have recharged the Phantoms of the First Keep, but sadly nobody spawned outside of Nuln, so there was nobody for Zacharias to kill off and recharge that stuff. I wonder if it's random, though. Hmm. Well, all right, uh, you need to actually go around and do stuff. I'm actually send you off to go to Castle Carcassonne. Just got to make sure that you don't lose a bunch of stuff, though. Frankly, you're going to need a lot more units if you fight stuff. Fyldorf is an optional target. We don't actually want to necessarily destroy them. We could head to Grizzle Valley. I really want you to destroy Gelt. Even though you do have Metal Storm, so it's not super critical. Dragon Champion. I mean, I just, just, just stay here. Uh, just stay here for now. We need a few more turns. Oh, we can't raid. Oh, well. Uh, we need a few turns with you guys here while we build up a few things. Uh, hmm. A bunch of stuff here that we could destroy as well. Hmm. Tempting. Just to randomly declare war on Kislev, but you need to re-up your army and then maybe get some elites in there, so. Yeah, just wait. Just wait. It's, it's coming. 
<laughs> sooner rather than later. For now, let's get a new tech up and running. Uh, March of Darkness gives us missile resist for all Lord of Draconis units, which is nice. But it does take our precious Martial Valor. And uh, we've been wanting to get through some of this stuff. And it's all one turn now, which is also nice. Hmm. Don't really care about the Vampiric Corruption, but the Winds of Magic Power Reserve ain't too bad. And we did get Spell Swords, which is great. The Bonus versus Dwarfs is irrelevant. The Bonus versus Empire is irrelevant. Although, I wonder if this, if the Burnoff's Brigands count as Empire. As in whether we get the buffs for fighting them. Let's go for Vampiric Emissaries, I guess. I'm just double checking if there's anything here that we'd really, really like. But I think we're okay. And we don't have enough of the Order Profundum stuff as yet, so... Yeah. All right. Uh, that looks good. Uh, we're not moving on science skill points, character initiatives, building upgrades. We are building the library here. We are building the library here. Two locations. And we have built one here and... You know, I just built the Dark Mortuary. It, it's uh, the lack of the ability to build a Graveguard in this place right now is what's gating us from uh, moving some of these armies around. So I think that's what we got to do. And then this is going to take how many turns to go to the next... A few turns, but we'll have time to, enough to save up the stuff we need by, by then. Anyway, let's end the turn. Let's see what happens with Anarch. I'd really love those guys destroyed, as in this uh, particular blob of... See if anybody attacks us. And this particular blob of witch hunters. Please besiege us. Uh, Summer of a Siege, Castle Drakenhav, lovely. Alright, and that means we can get Anarch on the field. And with a few Ordo Profund- or a few Ordo Templarum reinforcements. It looks like a close victory, they don't have any Inquisition kill squads. Oh, they don't have Inquisition kill squads. Just handgunners. Oh, maybe we could have just attacked with us, I didn't even realize. Whoops. Uh, anyway, Lichbone Pennant, no longer needed on these guys as we have Spell Sword for them, but the Black Knights will like it, so. And Black Knights shall have it. Uh, we'll give leadership to, I don't know, the Black Knights, because they're fragile. Ah, uh, you know what, no. We don't care about the Black Knights dying nearly as much as the Bloodkin, because we need them maintained at reasonably high levels so we can turn them to Templarum. Anyway, go. Alrighty, finally uh, going to get Anarch on the field to do some uh, work, and yeah, I'm liking uh, I'm uh, liking the armor very much. I've said it before, the uh, blue and bronze looks really, really good, especially when it's covered in blood, and these guys do have a tendency to get bloody. We also have to uh, uh, where we get the chance to uh, use some of these Drakenhof Templar Knights. It's going to be a little bit of a while before we have our own versions of those available but it's nice to see them on the field hmm although with my graphical settings the orange becomes a little bit too bright i have a little bit of a, a saturation increase and due to the color settings i use huh i wonder what these guys would look with the like sort of corroded armor of the uh, uh of the black knight's pieces on the where the orange are I, at least specifically with my settings be curious to see how they look with uh, when the regular vanilla settings instead but anyway anyway generally speaking i like my settings the way they are Although you guys let me know if uh, it's a little bit too, I don't know, colorful. I, I find that uh, the regular game looks a little teensy bit too drab sometimes, so it does make it look, I guess, sometimes a little bit more realistic when it's a little bit more drab, but at the same time, this is Warhammer, and uh, it should all be an absolute colorful spectacle. And there we go. Now that they're getting covered in blood, they're going to look real great. And they've got a few of those uh, Graveguard helping them out as well. Does this guy have a different shield? Wait, did they? <laughs> okay, I think it's just a broken texture. <laughs> it's like, did they, <laughs> did they give that one guy a uh, wooden shield? What is this? <laughs> uh, his, uh, his buddies just completely screwed him over. 
Everybody gets the fanciest, fanciest shields, and he just gets like a couple of boards cobbled together. Anyway, anyway, where will it end to combat? Now we move the Graveguard as well as the uh, Drakenhof Templar Warriors as our main portion uh, towards the enemy center, whereas on the sort of semi-rightmost flank, we have Bloodkin Thralls moving in, uh, wherein they're not going to be the ones who are taking damage from the handgunners, as they're going to be more fragile than the Graveguard and the Drakenhof Templars, shielded and armored more heavily as those guys are. The Bloodkin will, however, pin these guys in place, allowing for the Black Knights and, and Drakenhof uh, Templar Knights to move on in. And smash right into uh, the uh, back of the enemy lines. Obviously, we don't have buffs on these guys as Anarch is a relatively low level so far. And so we do still have to be careful about the Halberdiers dealing heavy damage to our... Well, all, to the Black Knights pretty much always, but even to the Drakenhof Templars. And the Knights, specifically. Otherwise, it looks like we managed to overrun the enemy. Our additional units of Black Knights are working in the background to make sure that the enemy handgunners are unable to fire and knock our Knights down. And there we go. See how these guys look so great with the uh, blood all over their armor? It also feels so appropriate to be fighting enemies in these, like, boggy territories. Meeting the, uh, this is just a place where it feels very appropriate to meet a pile of undead. Anyway, anyway, chase the enemy down now. As the enemy army will soon break. Anarch's been trying to chase that witch hunter around, but the witch hunters, because they have range attacks, uh, do have a tendency. Oh, I love that sword glow. It's uh, it's the same kind of effect or similar effect that uh, Vlad has on Blood Drinker, but that looks great. And definitely echoes the type of thing that uh, uh, that Vlad would do. The sword is very heavily glowing, uh, but the rest of Anarch is, uh, well, uh, armored and stuff. And yeah, this is what I mean. Witch Hunter just running. <laughs> and the 35 speed. Oh, wow. Anarch's quite slow without the horse. At 34 speed, he's just above standard infantry speeds. And yeah, he's wearing heavy armor, but uh, uh, he's not trying. Although he's just sort of slowly jogging at the enemy. I believe somebody made a comment about Aberash back when he was on foot rather than flying, that regardless of his speed, it was sort of looking like more of a leisurely walk at the enemy, hence it explains why he doesn't run at horse speed. Who needs to run when you will eventually sort of outlast the enemy? Run them down eventually. Anyway, the Halberdiers are still holding fairly impressively, but uh, the uh, Drakenhof Templars and the uh, Graveguard are overrunning them. It does look like we have taken a little bit of damage on one of our Graveguard units. Um, but we back it off right when the enemy army shatters. Maybe we should have backed that unit off a little bit earlier. Uh, but oh uh, well. And there we go, a slightly longer battle this time around. Took us a little bit of time to work on the enemy uh, flanks here. We have no damaging spells in this army as yet, so the enemy was able to blob up here on the right and here on the left. And while their center collapsed, those two individual blobs were able to hold our army back for a little while. Not to worry though, as we continue upgrading Anarch's army and Anarch himself, it's going to get a lot more powerful. And I think that uh, soon we'll be able to move him out. Plus, ooh, I like the uh, shots of him running around in the, uh, in the forest. Once again, I really love this type of lighting. And yeah, another thing is we are finally starting to rack up blood kisses again, so I'm expecting that next episode we'll be able to wake up the uh, uh, the Ordo Profundum uh, Ordo Grand Master as well, so we'll have another legendary lord on the field, which should be fun. Maybe we can keep him at the Awakening. I haven't decided where we're going to pop him in yet, but uh, certainly an option. Take over the uh, job from the Vampire Coast. Anyway, we got a little bit of chasing to do, so let's do it off screen. All right, very nice, and we don't even need to heal, which means we can free re freely release those captives and get the additional cash. And 
Oh, the army did survive, so chasing them down wasn't a waste of time. Well, that's great. Uh, Dragonov Templar Nightmare for Anarch, and more importantly, Curse of Undeath, that we maybe... Maybe should save some points to uh, get him his uh, uh, his tree here, so that we can get Psychic Drain up and running as fast as possible. Though I suppose another point into Invocation of the Eternal Wanderer, at least until he does, until he has an aspirant, would probably Still also be uh, worth our time. We can get an aspirant up and running from Aberash, though, and he can get them up and running fairly high levels now. Let's get you Arabe Gearhoff uh, Strong, which is great, though there's a decent likelihood that we upgrade these guys later to a... Uh, uh, to another type of entity. Ooh, Ungram is up. Yes. Uh, oh, you gotta be kidding me. You're in the way? You are in the way. Damn you, Masha. Damn you to hell. Alrighty. Uh, so, first things first. Aberrush, I'm going to need you to move here. There's probably some other thing. Oh, you know what? Let's, let's knock this little army out with a quick little auto resolve. Probably don't need to do anything to it auto resolve that. And do captives for XP, I guess. All right, sort of battle, and there we go. 12k money and decent amounts of martial valor and some dragon scales as well. Which hunters threat reduced? Indeed. Can't wait till they return. But for now, we're good. Now the valor that we received, five short of super nice or double nice, uh, is going to go towards. Wait. Wallach, just out of curiosity. Ah, so close to upgrading one of these guys. Damn, I wish that rat army had stayed. Should have probably attacked it just for the extra XP. Uh, but too uh, well. We'll be sure to spend some of the uh, uh, some of the valor next time. We should probably upgrade some of these guys, but at the same time, we might be better off just getting a few more uh, bloodkin thralls from Aberash and then sending them southward. Oh wait, we can't. Hmm. Last time we weren't able to recruit near him, were we? Which is somewhat concerning as well. Anyway, let's keep going for buffs for the Ordo Draconis, at least until we get all the way to uh, the Exotic Dead. Which I, just to double check, does buff the Disciples of the Path, yes. And both the Warriors and the Knights, I take it. And Disciples of the Path Inner Circle, and Disciples of the Path Knights. Fantastic. All right, Aberash. A nice little duel for you. We've been waiting for you, Ungrim. We're going to manually fight this, and by we, I mean Aberash is going to fight this by himself. Man, I was really hoping to do a... Uh, uh, to do a, whatchamacallit, worthy foe battle this episode, but it turned out that uh, the... Witch Hunters actually gave us a proper show today, which I am very glad of, since they basically guarantee these nice battles later in the campaign, um, but we may have to wait until next episode then to do the, uh, to do the other quest. No big deal. Alright, you and you, you can move forward, we can ignore the rest. Is Ungram breakable? Uh, he's unbreakable. Oh, which means we can kill off his army. Alright, fantastic. Uh, you guys go forward. Hey, no fireballs. What is this? Dwarf and fireballs? How dare you? <laughs> it's the rudest thing I've ever seen. Uh, Alright, then you can summon the vampires or the knights of the first keep here. And we'll activate your buffs. Heart piercing and red fury and... That's good enough for now. You guys charge into those miners with blasting charges at least. And Aberrush, keep fighting. Okay, you, you guys stop interfering with the duel. Go away. There we go. Now these two are absolute juggernauts. And though I fear that Ungram is too low level to uh, capitalize on a lot of uh, what makes him strong, is down to about half HP. And uh, how's the rest of our army? Oh, a little bit damaged. Uh, was it from the fireball? Let's heal you up. Let's heal you up, and the Phantoms of the First Keep are doing some work here as well, while Ungram drops to about half HP. Gotta love those area attacks and those poor miners. Stand absolutely no chance here. Alrighty. 
And you gotta assume that uh, that Abrush would very much respect Ungram, who uh, tries to sort of uh, walk both worlds, both his responsibility to his people as king and yet his oath as a slayer as well. And he certainly likes fighting tough opponents, so it's all there. Anyway, how are you guys? Oh, you guys are actually moving forward. Good for you, miners. Good for you. And good luck with that. Anybody else need a heal? I guess we can pop another one of these. Uh, our agent, and a couple more hits, and it looks like Ungram will be done for. Hasn't broken through Everesh's shield. Most likely due to the 97 melee defense or shield. Oh, wow, did that kill him? Ah, I just knocked him down. It looked like it killed him on the return of the sword, which would have been kind of neat. Alright, a couple more hits. He remains unbreakable, though. Yeah, certainly taking him a while to go down, which is great. Looks like our yeah, Disciples of the Path and Blood Dragon units have completely overrun those poor, poor miners, but still um, brave of them to actually sally out and attack us here. One more hit by the looks of it, and Ungram will fall. Hey, another fi parting fireball, uh, but uh, <laughs> but he goes flying uh, for uh, that. Very nice. A very nice job, Aberash. And up you go. We don't need to chase because it's a settlement battle. I also didn't check what we get for his defeat trait. Or at least, or I did, but it was probably a couple of episodes ago and I no longer remember it. As there's like 90 lords in the game, there's no way I'm going to remember both the regular defeat traits and then Aberash's secondary unique defeat traits as well. That's a lot of defeat traits, folks. Am I still salty about Kazrek? A little bit. A little bit. But it still amuses me greatly, so... And that's all that's needed. Anyway, uh, we are going to... Do we just destroy them now? They're, they're kind of blocking our path through the map. Uh, but on the other hand, Abrush's movement range... Yeah, you know what? Sack it again. <laughs> uh, almost tempted to uh, raise a blood keep here. Uh, hmm... We need to get to this, so Abrash, you're going to have to... Okay, so the defeated Ungram Iron Fist is a great uh, regular defeat trait. Spell resistance, missile resistance, and melee attack. What are, what's our missile resistance at now? Uh, what are we at here? 35 ward save, 5%... Oh, basically no missile resistance. 35% spell, though, which ain't too bad. Uh, let's check the Aaron Duelist for Ungram. Changeling, Carl... Oh, right, he gets death blow from him. All right. I mean, it's fine, minus the fact that the likelihood of Aberash actually reaching below 20% hit points is... so oh, so tiny. So, so incredibly oh, tiny. Well, let's say pretty darn unlikely. Anyway, Aberash, go here. Uh, you, Rabe Gearhoff, have to move southward. Zack, go for this. I imagine this guy will run. He will not run. I am surprised. Is this worth fighting, though? It's just uh, as much weaker than Azag's army. I mean, it might be fun to kill off some of the squig hoppers, but if we fight this now, we most definitely won't have time for that uh, other quest. What's the likelihood that we encounter squigs again in these numbers, though? We could do a little quick fight. It's a little quick fight. Why not? Just for fun. It's. It, I'm still having a great time. All right, wait, you don't look like... Oh, right, right, right. <laughs> All right, Abrash's army is coming in as a, a reinforcement, so we'll have to wait a little bit. These guys, the Blood Dragon Lords, are also act as really good reinforcements, and if I were to have a Lord following every army around, like as a secondary little mini army, which we probably will, they'll most likely be blood dragon lords. The purpose of the reason for this is that they have this Horn of the Blood Keep ability, which is quite useful and uh, nice to pop off to heal and buff everybody up. Not for long, mind you, only 16 seconds, but quite useful to have. Plus, I kind of like the idea of Aberash sending some uh, watchers of disciples, especially since the uh, glaives of the blood dragon lords make them look similar to 
to the uh, Disciples of the Path, sort of sending watchers along with every army to make sure and continue teaching the rest of the Blood Knights such that they adhere to the path. And don't feed on the, um, and don't feed on the weak and stuff, and, um, well, yeah. Pretty much every single disciple that Abarash has had, or at least all the big name disciples, we don't know about the tons of, like, uh, uh, lesser disciples and what happened to them. But characters like Wallach and, and the Red Duke and stuff, they've all failed in terms of achieving Abarash's teachings, so it would make sense for him to uh, take a little bit of a closer look at them. Lest he be even more disgusted with their failures. Unfortunately, it's been by and large the fate of the Blood Dragon and Bloodline that they have a tendency to just over focus on the martial mastery aspect of Abarash's teachings and not as much on not feeding upon the weak. Although there are obviously individual differences, like Wallach Harkin being super obsessed with nightly ritual. Which is kind of specific, but it's kind of missing the point. Aberash, of course, being a, a truly noble character doesn't necessarily make him a good character, but it does make him... but he is noble and honorable. Even if neutral. Now let's, uh... Anyway, anyway, how's the battle going? The rest of our army continues on the approach while Aberash is sort of running around. He's found the enemy lord and damaged him fairly heavily, but it's merely a night goblin war boss and thus is a weakling and thus not worthy of Aberash and uh, chasing him down. So we're going to have the Bloodkin Aspirant chase down the enemy lord while Aberash tries to knock out a few trolls and maybe not tries, but knocks out a few trolls in order to head towards that orky shaman. And the rest of our army is moving in as well. Obviously we're going to keep our uh, Bloodkin Aspirants or uh, uh, our Bloodkin Thrall Warriors rather back while the Disciples take the lead together with our Blood Dragon units. And then the Aspirants or the Bloodkin Thralls rather can move in after. It's gonna head a few units through the center of our formation as well towards some enemy trolls here as our Blood Dragon Lord is uh, distracting them and keeping them in place, allowing our units to move in, and we'll follow them up with a few more of our Bloodkin Thralls through the center. And ooh, looks like we're going to get some action for the uh, Death Guard Deck Watchers. We haven't had a lot of chances to watch them as yet, since we don't have a pile of Grave Guard due to the relative lack of Valor. But it's nice that they get to fight here, and they're fighting by themselves against the, these biggins, so I'm quite curious to see how they perform, especially since biggins are armor-piercing. Unlike the regular orc boys. Uh, they have a lot of strength to put in uh, those swings of their cleavers. Alright, how are they doing so far? Well, the Death Guard Deck Watchers are fine by and large right now. They do have periodic Curses of Undeath going from wherever other healing uh, spells are dropping. It looks like those Orc Biggins are having a fairly bad day, having lost about 30% of their HP so far. The rest of our army has by and large engaged, and we are now just going to out-attrition the enemy and knock them all down, rip them apart on this little field of ice. <laughs> For some reason, I just uh, I just imagined a, uh, a a vampire, like a like a knight, like a like a blood knight, or specifically like a blood dragon or something, uh, just putting on skates and just having fun, just skating around on the ice. <laughs> I don't know why that image uh, I got into my head, but as soon as I said the uh, as soon as I said ice, that's what I imagined. Uh, the path of the ice skater. Anyway, anyway, it uh, looks like the trolls are booking it on out of there, and in fact, it looks like the rest of the enemies are as well. A reasonable time to uh, fight uh, this particular one. Certainly, they didn't rout in a minute like Wallach's battle, uh, but uh, certainly worth it. And this was, what, like the fifth uh, cinematic battle of this particular episode? Ugh. It's gonna mean a ton more editing, but I'm having so much fun with this mod and watching the uh, uh, Vamps fight. I just can't help myself with all these additional cinematics. Anyway, I got a little bit of chasing to do as we usually do, but we can do that off screen.
Alright, nice fight, a full stack is a full stack and still worth fighting, and they were sort of in our way, so and they should have been destroyed. Plus, it got uh, it gave the chance for the Depth Guard Deck Watchers to shine. They've been overshadowed by other units so far throughout the uh, uh, throughout the run, as we don't have their numbers as yet due to the lack of valor, but they were able to whoop one-on-one -on -one a unit of work biggins and absolutely rip them apart with a little bit of help from you know various healing and going on on the map uh we are going to release the captives as enthralling would be pointless as it would go to zacharias's army anyway and this will enable this little army who oh Abrush, can you ah uh, you can't reach the enemy lord to actually chase him down we can just leave him there all right he, oh don't tell me he's in the way Oh, you have got to be kidding me. Is he actually in the way? <laughs> so that you can move towards him? Wait, go, go really close to him. Wait, can you maybe click on the worthy foe encounter? Ah. Yeah, I think we can't get to it because this guy's zone of control is blocking it. Oh, wow. That's, uh... That's something. <laughs> Damn you. Damn you, game. And Everash is too far to uh, reinforce with it. Uh, okay. Well, I guess we'll have to do it next turn. Everash, you can just sit here. Well. Well, well, well. We can put you into raiding at least. Uh, can't put Abrash into raiding, sadly. Anyway, with that, we are unfortunately out of time, though we achieved great battles uh, this episode, so I'm pretty happy. I promise we'll do a worthy foe encounter uh, next time around. Speaking of next time around, hopefully we'll be able to start Anarch moving, maybe towards Abrash, where he can hopefully transfer a few more of these Bloodkin Thralls to him. Not a crazy amount, but a decent amount of time. Maybe we'll have Anarch guard Mount Gunbad while a different army and guards Castle Drakenhof. Of course, this needs to be in two turns when Castle Drakenhof can reasonably defend itself, uh, but it'll be a little bit. Anyway, more uh, dragon, blood dragon action to come, so stay tuned. Don't forget to leave those likes and comments below, especially to Threshold, if you're into that sort of thing. All glory to the algorithm, and thanks for watching.